So the definition for bond enthalpy is the amount of energy required to make an entire mole of bonds and in the gaseous state and most importantly it's an average. So the bond, say it's a CO bond, um, it could be bound in this configuration or it could be in this configuration or all sorts of different other configurations and the influence of other bonds around it will determine how strong it is. So this particular one might be weaker than this particular one because of the influences of the positives and negatives around it. So you will find that this is out of your data booklet. You'll find that these numbers differ um, according to different data booklets and different textbooks because they've used different um, averages and different ranges of compounds in their calculations and that's quite important. It's quite a common question. Um, and later on you'll see why um, you'll see gaseous. This definition is actually quite useful in determining the formula for using this for Hess's law. Okay, so average bond enthalpy is the amount of energy required to break one mole of bonds in the gaseous state averaged across a range of compounds containing that bond. So this is another version of an enthalpy diagram but this time the reactants are written out and the products are written out and the actual value of enthalpy is given here. And uh, because this is energy released from the chemical bonds into heat energy into the surroundings, um, it's negative and it's exothermic. Um, and so it, it probably makes a lot of sense, so if we're going in the opposite direction, um, that it takes energy to break bonds. So what's actually going on here is the CH4, all of the HCH bonds are breaking and all of the O bonds are breaking. Uh, and so you're in this transition state where there's the O's, double bond O's have broken and uh, four CH bonds are broken. And it probably makes sense to know that that is endothermic because energy is going in. Now, if this was going the opposite direction, this would be an overall endothermic reaction. Uh, this is actually an overall exothermic reaction but both the endothermic and exothermic reactions and all reactions require some breaking of bonds, some energy to go in, and then they form bonds and hopefully um, you can just accept that if energy has gone in to break a bond, um, the opposite is uh, releasing energy, um, even though that's not as um, intuitive as this first one here. And so you can tell that um, as these are bond, these are formed. So these are the new types of bonds that are formed. Um, there's a an O and a uh, another OH bond here, and there's four of those actually, because there's two um, HO. Well, technically um, H2O. So it actually looks like that, but I'm just singling out the bonds, uh, and this actually looks like this, um, and there's two of those. So what you've got here is bonds being broken from here to here and then bonds being formed from here to here and because the bonds that have formed are more stable than the bonds that were broken this actually has uh, the energy has actually more energy has actually um, less energy is remaining in the bonds and more energy has been gone into has gone into the system. Okay, so if the overall reaction is exothermic, the bonds have lost energy, they are more stable and have higher bond enthalpies. So it is harder to break these bonds, they're more stable. Um, and if the overall reaction is endothermic, which is going in the opposite direction, the bonds have gained energy because the system's gone cold and the heat energy's gone into the, the substances. The, the higher energy bonds are less stable uh, and have lower bond enthalpies, which means they're easier to break. All right, so that's um, that's quite important. There's quite a few concepts there that are very testable, and that's um, there's quite a, that's a few quite a few points on your syllabus. Um, and so, using Hess's law, this is where the gaseous products um, turning into uh, gaseous atoms comes into effect because both the react the the bond enthalpies for the reactants and the bond enthalpies of the products are basically just telling you they're taking that thing and they make it into atoms. So if you're going to use Hess's law and get from reactants to products, you have to work out when you're going in this direction is uh, which which signs are you reversing, and it has to be this one here. So it has to be reactants minus products, even though um, products minus reactants is um, You've seen that before, that must be an enthalpy, 
um, but when you're using bond enthalpies uh, you need to understand what the definition is therefore you need to understand what you're doing what those values are so you are going in this direction and then you're getting that and going in the other direction and reversing it okay so I wouldn't recommend memorizing the formula I would recommend um, knowing what these terms mean and then sussing out whether it's products minus reactants or reactants, reactants minus products. Lastly is uh, an example calculation. Now make sure you set it out like this. Have three steps, one, two, three, uh, because sometimes they're worth three marks and it's um, you'll make less mistakes also. The only thing that you need to know is how to do um, write these. Uh, and so go back to the various videos or parts of your textbook that talk about how to work out to work out um, how to do Lewis structures. So you know there's a tri there's one triple bond N, there's three HH bonds, and once you've learned how to do these, um, you'll uh, know that there's um, six NH bonds. So here we go, six NH bonds, three Hs, one N. That's fine. You'll go to your data tables and look up these numbers and then add them together. So that's the bonds broken because it's the reactants and the bonds form is the bond is the products and so you're looking for six of those. You look up this 390 value for NH and you get that uh, and then write formula substitute in units always. So there's the formula and the reactants are here and that's minus this and so you get and so the answer is minus 90 kilojoules per mole.